Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Now, at the start of the week on the podcast, uh, I gave away the high-tech information that the guys from Lightlead would be joining me for a review and a, a demo of their new product, the Lightlead. Now, we put this up online and it's caused a lot of questions and a lot of discussion, which, let's face it, is one of the best things about having a site like this. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome into the studio Dave, and Daniel, Daniel. Oh, from, not from Lightlead, but from Iconic Sound. Iconic Sound. But the product, of course, is the Lightlead. Lightlead. So you've been at this for a little while now. It's been a little while before it's got to the stage we're at now. Ten years. Ten years. Long years. <laughs> Ten long years. So, so what was the catalyst? What made you go? Do you know what? There's got to be something better than the conventional guitar cable. I feel. Tell the story, because Dave always goes, oh, I don't tell the story. But basically, we used to manage a band, and it went top five in the charts, and um, it was doing really well. And we're doing all the big radio road shows, 20,000 people strong and plus. Anyway, we did a road show in Wales one day, and um, our guitarists always like to play live. The whole band like to play live. Um, As well live. they should. Absolutely. Key music live. Yeah. Totally. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, he went to start playing his uh, guitar, and the first chord that he goes to play, out of the amp, starts playing radio, whatever it was. And um, I was standing side of stage panicking, because 20,000 people are hearing a radio signal, you didn't get time to sound check or anything. And Dave is on the sound desk, right in the middle of like 10,000 people, and I'm trying to use telepathy to get to him going, what is going on? Um, anyway, he's fiddling all the knobs and trying to get it all right, and nothing was happening. And after about a couple of minutes, he realised it was a guitarist cable acting as an aerial, as you do. And um, yeah, the radio waves were being spread out over the audience, and that's what it was. We changed the cable, the gig went on. But it just got us thinking. That's two, three minutes, that's the longest two or three minutes of your life when you're working. It was. It is, yeah, especially when you're on the sound guy, everyone looks at you. Mm -hmm. like, uh, what you doing? Oh, gosh, <laughs> it was just so painful. But that got me thinking uh, what caused it? What was the problem? Um, my cousin, family, bless him. Yeah. Uh, it was his <laughs> guitar cable was just old. Uh, lots of broken little capacitance wires in it uh, that just managed to pick up an aerial signal as he kind of rolled up his volume, acted as a little tuning pot. And I thought the only way to get rid of that uh, is just don't use any wire. Just use, um, say, an optical lead, and that's zero inductance, problem solved. So we tried to buy, tried it. To buy <laughs> one, but nobody made any. So, uh, so he's like, one. yeah, he's, he's like, like, just make one. Fiddles with solder and the whole so house turns. Solder. Yeah, really the whole ter my house turned into complete like lab. Everywhere was like circuit boards and wires and test equipment. Sounds <laughs> sounds like a perfect house to me. <gasps> oh my god! Absolutely. I was just confined perfect to my cave. room. That's it. Yeah. And anyway, he came out six months later, literally after fiddling with all this stuff. And then we had an earphone in his ear and a guitar, and he's like this puzzled look on his face. And he goes, I think I've done it. And I went, really? Yeah. And that was it. And yeah. we played it, and it was like this sound. The guitar was coming in my yeah. ear, and I was like, oh, my God, he has actually done it. What do you do now? Do you know what I mean? So that's, that was the start of our journey. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then, so the stage we're at now is, so you've got a Kickstarter up and running. Yes, we have. Uh, and you've got some pre-production... What's the prototypes. word on prototypes? Prototypes. The we have the prototypes, yes we do. Um, those prototypes, or one of those prototypes, we're going to put through its paces, but this is it. This, this is, this is, is the it. <laughs> this is the light lead. Prototype. It really is. Prototype. It really is the light lead. Yeah, it's here. Uh, it's been on tours, it's been in studios, it's uh, currently being used by Coldplay. Rick Simpson, Rick the Simpson, producer, the producer, the amazing yeah. producer, is using it. They think it. it's amazing, they think it's like playing yeah. through lasers. Which is okay yeah. with us. There's exactly. a whole nother. Yeah, see? <laughs> it's, not, it's not lasers. It's not lasers. But yeah, they like it. <laughs> so this is the. I mean, no, yeah, you yeah. take that. Yeah. Take it in mind. <clears throat> So this is the pre-production model. Now, the, the images that people have seen on our site and on your site are the... Well, final designs. Be... They are the final designs. These are the prototypes that we use to drag around so they don't get smashed yeah. up. For the final quite... design, um, we were th the assembly of those were very tricky. Yeah. So we were looking we at different a lot ways. On a, the assembly of yeah. these, where the, on these the cables connected to the device and it's... Um, For lining up would have been really difficult yeah. in assembly. So we've, what we've done is the new design is detachable from the actual cable and all the optics and everything are inside the plug-in so that there's no optical coupling. It's just an electrical connection yeah. uh, to the end of the plug. So, so the theory being you could buy 
two of the the jack end, if you like, and have yeah. different lengths. Yeah, cables. different lengths. Studio Absolutely. length yeah. and a live length. Yeah, yeah. Very um, cool. And an extra long length if you want. <laughs> so it's fiber optic. It yeah. is fiber optic. And it's plastic optical fiber type. Right. Yeah. And it's. Well, you know, it, it, yeah, it can be made out of glass. We've made a three hundred yeah, foot version. We made a glass fiber version for um, Keith Urban. Keith Urban. Keith Urban's to, technician uh, wanted to run it all around the edge of the stage. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, and so he made he it. That. He with his bare <laughs> fingers soldered it, and it worked beautifully. So awesome. the technology is there to be. But presumably the glass ones are significantly more expensive. So <laughs> yeah, we're not producing the glass fiber ones uh, on a. On mass. Yeah, on mass no, at the no, moment. No. These are the this we started with this uh, guitar version mm -hmm. or bass or any electric piece of electric instrument. Uh, these so it are, could be keyboards, it yeah. could be yeah, it could be yeah, anything. Yeah. And then we're gonna be doing it in the XLR versions for microphones and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Very, very cool. That's why we're our Kickstarter. <laughs> yes. Yes. We'll come to that later yeah. on. So one of we, we've had loads of questions. Um people are naturally skeptical about new technologies they will be skeptical. absolutely yeah th there are skeptics out there i'm normally one of them but <laughs> the one thing i i'm also am is i'm very much in trying to embrace new ideas and new yeah. stuff so what we're going to do is i'm going to uh, warm up the my new amp the new chandler and we'll do an ab yeah sure Brilliant. um i guess we've got how long is that is that a 10 30 30 30 30 no it's 20 foot that's a 20 foot I've probably got a 20 foot cable, so we can Absolutely. do a direct comparison. Yeah. So that way, those who are saying, oh, it's not a blind A, B, or whatever, we can get around that one. Um, there's a plan to put to make an XLR one? Yes, there is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because an XLR, obviously, the one thing in, uh, certainly with, with vocal mics, for example, yeah. to have a super clean, super un, yeah. a cable that doesn't tarnish the sound or affect the sound in any way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a singer as well, so like I have mics breaking me all the time, the leads, and it's yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for the XLR version. But I love the idea of, of a cable that's having no effect on the sound whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. What we spent time on is the actual system that transmits the audio in the analog form is what. So it's not, it's not, there's no, there's no A to D, D to A conversion no. at all. There's no, no D to A, A to D, D, A, D, it's none of that. It's not modulated, it's not a carrier, it's just a pure analog signal, brightness. Up, yeah. down, light, bright. That's what it is. Um, so, and the it's the, the difference in the XLR version is just the the way the inputs work. It's nothing. The transmission is exactly the same. So all the cables will all work the same. You can you can um, we'll probably use the same connector. So you can use if you've got twenty foot, you can plug it into your XLR ends or your jack ends or your phono oh, ends if you've got very very cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's obviously because it's it's light. It has a source and a destination. Yeah. They are one way. It is one way. Yeah. yeah. It, that made me sound intelligent, didn't it? Just, <laughs> it just for a moment. Did. <laughs> so, um, let's do it. Let's plug it in. Okay, let's see what we get. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we have conventional, good old fashioned. I'm not going to name the brand, but um, available from all good music stores. Uh, mm. Conventional version with with pretty much standard Neutrix. Uh, into the rather lovely Chandler. Um, nothing particularly flash about the setup. Uh, let's have a listen. Sounds like a guitar to me. Okay, so now we have the light lead, which is attached, uh, sending over to the amplifier. Um, so let's see if something similar, I have no idea what I just played. Um, let's see if something similar works out. I can tell that's just brighter, fuller, yeah. um, louder, la definitely louder. Yeah, yeah. Louder. yeah. Um, it just is. It is. Yeah, it's twenty foot without without any capacitance, so it's pure. That's awesome. Okay, <laughs> um, even just that little tiny noodle, for lack of a better phrase, I can hear much more top end. 
much less mud almost. There's it's less kind of crisper, sharper. It's yeah, just... unaffected. Yeah. Uh, I'm sold. What, what, what more can I say? Um, <laughs> let's go back. Let's switch back to the other one, and we can do a bit more, bit more AB. <laughs> Top end's gone. Yeah. The brightness is gone. It has, yeah. So like, put a blanket. Yeah. not even close is it no. it's taken us a long time to get there but that's that's guitar straight down the cable straight into the amp <laughs> absolutely so one of the questions people have been asking is that obviously guitar cables load and the guitar and whatever pedals and things you have on your front end load the amp differently yeah. how does this what what's the load what's the what's the drawbacks well, um, this is a good question because what we found is that with cables and when you plug them into anything, that completely affects what the guitar does anyway because the whole thing becomes a connected circuit, so different inputs, impedances will affect the guitar, the length of the cable will affect the sound of the guitar. With the light lead, the only input it sees is that end and the other end doesn't know what it's doing. So you can take that and plug it straight into a line level desk, it won't affect the guitar at all. The guitar will continue to make the same tone as it did, whether it's plugged into high impedance input or straight into a line level in the desk. Each end is completely dependent, they don't affect each other at all. Whereas a normal cable, different inputs, it will sound different on everything, especially into a, you plug a guitar director into a desk. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So, um, for any of you out there who were in any way, shape, or form skeptical, um, hopefully that's gone a long way towards proving a point. Uh, it, it's a great product. Um, I very much hope it hits all the numbers for... Thank you. Fingers crossed. ...the crowdfunding. Yeah. You've got best part of two months still to go. It was Absolutely. We've yeah. just started and we're completely... like We've never done this before. Crowdfunding is completely new to us and we're feeling our way. Um, so, yeah, we're completely just taking it step by step and meeting people along the way. And, um, you know, we're getting such a positive reaction, which is brilliant from, from everyone that's interested in the new technology and the future of audio, you know. It could really be something special. So, you know, now we need to convert them to backing us and then we can get this technology into manufacture, get it to market, and we can develop it for all the areas that we, you know, we feel it can be developed into, you know, optical headphones even, and XLRs, and optical, you know, everything. Optical XLRs, yeah. Optical I mean, XLRs, I'd say, yeah. say certainly from a, from, a, from a studio point of view, to have a couple of three, maybe maybe eventually replacing all the ca all the copper cable in a studio with analog with optical absolutely might definitely be the way forward i think but to start with about having one or two specific pieces yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well <laughs> well thank you so much for letting me see it firsthand oh, thank um you. and first here if that's the right phrase yeah, um Best of luck with the Kickstarter. Oh, thank, thank you. you so Hopefully, much. the community will get behind it, um, and we'll be sharing it and all that sort of stuff over the That'd be over the, the interwebs. Brilliant. Thank you. But so for much. now, they've been Danielle and Dave from Iconic, Iconic Sound. Sound. Light lead. I've been James from Project Expert. I'll see you again soon for some more gear talk. <laughs>